My name is Jamie, and this is not really a story of a super scary encounter that'll tick with everyone, but more of a personal experience that freaked me out. I was 25 when this happened, and it really shook me for a long time. My mother had a history of anxiety attacks since she was about my age, and I never thought I could change so much in this way. Every time I think back on the details of this, it sparks a little bit of anxiety each time. So, I was sitting there at home with a friend, and she was going on about a guy she liked. I wasn't feeling too good that day, as just a feeling of general unwellness. I thought it was because I didn't get any sleep or whatever, but the feeling got worse in that moment. I wasn't really listening to her, although I was really trying. She asked me several times if I was alright, but I just kept telling her yes, and then sinking back into myself. All of a sudden, I started to get a pounding in my chest, as if I had been running for the past 20 minutes. It was really scary, and it made it worse. I could feel my heart pounding in my chest, and up into my neck and both arms. I can't remember if I could breathe or not, as most of my memory is foggy at best from that moment. I slipped out of my chair and told her to take me to the ER. She started freaking out and asking me what was wrong, but all I could manage to tell her through the worsening symptom was, Chest! Something wrong! She drove me to the nearest ER and we went inside. The ER took my vitals, which my heart had slowed down by then and I wasn't feeling as sick as I was. It'd taken us about 15 minutes or so to get to the ER, so enough time for it to pass. I was still shaky and my friend told me all the color had drained from my face. They put me in a bed, and told me that everything looked just fine, and that they were going to run some more tests on me. As I was waiting for the test results to come back, someone in a bed near me was screaming on occasions and making all kinds of strange noises. I could hear my heart rate go up on the beeping thing behind me that I was hooked up to. At rest, my heart rate was 110, and I'd been told before that it should never be higher than 90 while at rest. This freaked me out even more, and I never got any straight answers from the doctors, which kind of just seemed to want me to get out of their bed. The person screaming kept on and making it worse. I still had no clue what was going on, and I thought I was dying at the time. Right before the results of my test came back, someone came over to the curtain I was in and poked their head in. It was an older man who had bumps all over his face and a gown on. He stared at me for a good 20 seconds before pointing at me and saying, You're gonna die for what you did! He left, and my heart rate shot through the roof again. One of the nurses poked back into the curtain to check me out, and I told her what had just happened. She then told me that I had an anxiety attack, and the guy with schizophrenia just re-triggered it. Once she told me that, my heart rate started to slow down to about 110 again. I asked her why it's still up over 100, and she just said, eh, it's a little high, yeah. And then she turned around and left. They gave me nitro and all that, my test results which confirmed no heart attack, and sent me out. I was still on edge about it, maybe happening again, or maybe something else was the cause of this other than anxiety but I never got any answers except from other people who have experienced this issue. They say similar things, but never the exact same stuff. The guy that had schizophrenia though, I know it wasn't his fault that he was suffering from that or what he did, but someone should have been there to prevent him from doing it and making me worse. I've been scared for five years about a rebound attack, but it's only happened a few other times. It hasn't put me back in the ER, but in my head, there's still a possibility that there could be something wrong. I have a Wawa down the street from my house that I stop at and get iced coffee and a sandwich before heading off to my friend's place to play video games all night. I usually don't encounter strange people or heavily truculent morons, but one night, I drove right into a shitstorm. 
I called my friend to see if he wanted to ride with me to Wawa before starting on Minecraft for the night, and he said why not. I picked him up and we headed over to the store to get our caffeine fixes and midnight munchies. When we got there, I decided I was going to park right in front of the door as I'd gotten tired of parking on the side where there's some bum that keeps harassing me as if we're friends. I knew him in high school, he's annoying. As soon as I pulled up, there was a neckbeard, presumably, that walked up in front with who I'm guessing was his girlfriend. I saw him making note of him being there for no reason, and then looked over to my left to see what had rattled the air around my head. There was a very dirty silver sedan that some skinny crackhead looking SOB was driving, and revving up the engine as if it was a monster truck and he was about to take off. It was pretty ear shatteringly loud. My car is by no means soundproof from the inside, so I can hear the neckbeard yell, CUT THAT SHIT OUT! I looked over back to the sedan, which had aggressively pulled out of the parking space, and drove forward a little bit to where the guy driving was facing the store parked behind my car, blocking me in at first glance. I heard the guy yell back to the neckbeard, asking him what the fuck did he just say to him, and he'll get out of the car and beat his ass. Profanity slung between the two as he engaged in a verbal battle of drunken wits. Soon, the crackhead had gotten out of his vehicle and was squaring up with the intention not to kiss because their faces were five inches apart. You know, because they can't hear each other yelling from five inches away. Very normal. By the time I was able to look over that way again, because they were fighting just a few feet away from my car, with my friend in the seat next to me, they were fist fighting each other. I had a hard time choking down the panic attack that was coming on. I'll have to explain why I felt this way. I have a bad habit of feeling like if someone gets in my car that they're under my protection from anything that could go wrong. So when something does, I try my best to stay calm and get out of the situation so my guests don't get hurt or get dragged into something dangerous. It's just the way I am. I finally managed to peek a look on what was transpiring on the ground just mere feet from my car, and what I saw filled me with horror. I was hoping that it would just be that they had a little yelling contest and be done. But no. They had to go into a whole rolling on the ground fight to the death thing. I know I was outside of the fight myself and I had nothing to do with it. But that panic attack was close enough that I could taste it. Maybe that's why they call it a disorder. So as they rolled on the ground hitting each other and trying not to touch each other's man parts in the process. The crackhead's car was still parked right behind me, but I noticed that I might just be able to get out, but if I hit it, the guy probably wouldn't notice anyway or pretty much care for that matter. By now, the two girls were standing over them pulling each other's hair and yelling about their own problems with each other. The two guys rolled out of the way on the ground, away from my car, and that's when I decided to try to get out. I had two poles in front of my car, inches away, and the car equally as far from the back. I turned my wheel to the right as far as it would go, and I hit the gas only a little bit. Mind you, this is a 1.8 liter Pontiac Vibe, so hitting the gas even too hard would send me flying into the storefront. I was able to close the few inches, and then turn my wheel to the left and back out closing the gap in the back, almost hitting the mirror of the guy's car. I did this again two more times until I finally had the clearance to weasel my way out of the spot sideways, thankfully having the space to my right to use to back all the way out and leave that situation. I parked as far away as possible on the other side of the lot to calm myself and choke down the rest of the panic attack. I had doubts that I'd be able to get out of that tiny parking spot, but thank god for tiny cars. Once I thought I was good, we got out of the car to go into the store, and as we passed by them still rolling on the ground and people were out there staring at them, I went in and got my coffee and calmed the rest of the way down in the store. The cops were called and they were out there before I came back out. I sat there from a safe distance until I saw the cop had to draw his taser on one of the girls, 
because she kept coming at him aggressively after he told her multiple times to stay over at the car until he got to her. They all ended up going to jail that night because of drunken disorderly conduct and fighting in public. I saw the same cop that was out there a few nights later while walking around and taking pictures for a texture pack I'm making in Minecraft. He stopped to see what we were up to and that's when I got the details of what happened after I left. That was a crazy experience and I don't see too many of those. But I like to stay away from those as far as possible, for my safety and the people that are with me. I kind of regret now not shooting video of the scene to show you guys, but spontaneous things like that happen at random and I'd never think about pulling my camera out. If you ever find yourself in a situation such as this, make sure you know what your exit is and take it as soon as possible. My friend and I were stopping in Jacksonville and doing a circuit trip for the holidays. We figured that we would stop there on our way out of state and have dinner and stay for the night. I heard about a mall nearby from one of the residents and thought it would be a great idea to go there. I was surprised by the size of that mall. It was tiny. It was disappointing. After we had gotten a hotel room, we took a rail car to the mall and I felt like a moron wanted to go see it because there was absolutely nothing there. Maybe we had come at a bad time or something. I really don't know. We walked around and wasted time until after 10 p.m., so it was dark by the time we decided to go back to the hotel room. When we went to go back on the rail car, it was already closed off. I was told that it would stay open until about 12, and I was lied to, I guess. We had taken this thing and had no clue how to get back otherwise to the hotel. We decided to get a taxi back up there. So while waiting on the taxi, this guy approached us. There was no one else around, and we were waiting in front of the mall entrance. After this experience, I know why Jacksonville has a rep like it does. The guy specifically came up to me to ask me for my phone so he can use it. I told him no since I had suspicions that he was just calling a dealer or something. That seemed to be the theme around this area. When he heard the word no, he started angrily begging that he use my phone. When I told him to go find somebody else, he stood there making angry sounds, and I could tell that he was trying his best not to threaten or attack me. We wouldn't want that now, would we? My friend stepped in and said, Dude, he's already said no, go find somewhere else to be. I think that made the guy angrier, and he broke. He got close to my friend, breathing in his face and telling him to say it again, say it again. We both froze and the guy stopped his threats to start walking away saying, that's what I thought. Once he had gone around the corner, my friend and I agreed that we needed to get out of that area that second and we found a store that was open a few blocks down the road. We called our taxi driver and told them to meet us there instead. The guy didn't like hearing that very much, and didn't even show up since he didn't want to drive that far anyway, but we did end up getting a ride back to the hotel at some point that night. That was the last time I will ever step foot in that city. I was driving down a highway in the middle of nowhere, trying to get home one night. I'd stayed a little late at work, and all I really wanted to do was get home and sleep. I had barely any energy left for what was about to happen. I'm a female, and at the time I was in my late 20s, just trying to make ends meet. My car wasn't in the best condition, but it's all I had, and my much hated job was of course out of town. Halfway through this highway, there's just thick trees on either side and it's just that for miles. My car decided to die right there. I couldn't get it to come on no matter what I did. I only had one choice. I had to hitchhike. 
I didn't have anyone that could come save me from this, so that wasn't an option. Everyone I knew was either out of state or not awake. I thumbed down the first vehicle that I could get to stop. The first two passed me, and a truck pulled over. I was scared, but that wasn't the time for me to be picky on who rescued me. The man who stopped was extremely nice and made me feel like I'd made the right choice to stop him. I told him that my car had died and I needed a ride somewhere. He told me to get in. I did offer to pay him for his trouble, but he told me to keep the money. I thought he was just doing this out of kindness. Maybe he was. He definitely wasn't doing it because he thought he would get anything out of it. That was confirmed to me later. On the way down the highway, he tried to make small talk to me, but some of the things that he was asking was personal questions. He sprinkled them in between why was I out there and where was I coming from. Almost back in town, something happened in that man's head that can't be scientifically explained, or at least I couldn't tell you what happened. He snapped and was a totally different person. He started driving aggressively and getting sort of angry. Some of that anger was aimed at me, and I don't know why. He started talking to me like I was taking time out of his busy schedule, or that I was one of his kids and that I had to be picked up from school because I whoopee cushioned the teacher and got sent home. Yeah, it definitely had that kind of vibe to it. He got louder and I just stayed quiet while he started to rant and go on about from subject to subject. It was honestly scaring the crap out of me, and I wanted out of that truck. He pulled into a nearby gas station and demanded that I got out of his truck. He said it like I had just crawled in uninvited or something. I definitely wasn't going to argue with him and I got out of his truck. After that he pulled off, but I could hear him say something in a nasty tone to me. I couldn't tell what it was, but at that point it didn't matter to me. I was alone and confused in a parking lot of an empty gas station, but at least it was open and I was away from that guy. When I went inside, I found out the guy that was working there was just about to leave, and he was nice enough to offer me a ride home. That's actually how I got home. I only had to wait for him to close the store, which wasn't a problem at all. He drove me home, but I had to get an Uber the next day and try to get the afternoon off from work to try to rescue my own car. What was wrong with the car? I'd run out of gas, and I didn't know it. The meter stopped working and I didn't know. I didn't get the afternoon off, but I was able to get a co-worker to help me with that, and I did get home safely. My name is Bennett, and I'm a girl in her 20s that drives for Uber. I'd just gotten a really cool car for Christmas, and my dad said that if I can put gas in it myself, he would cover the insurance and all that. I told him as soon as I could, I'd be picking up an Uber job. He liked that idea. After the holidays is when I got my Uber job. I started working and I was thinking with my first few jobs that I would get gas and a camera to go in the car. This happened before I could get the camera. I picked up a lot of people and for the most part they were really cool. I met some very interesting people and I was starting to love the job. I also picked up a few drunk people that were a little loud but they were pretty respectable. I would come to actually pick up a lot of bar goers up late at night, but they weren't anything like one guy I picked up from a party. I got a call for a pickup and so I went. When I arrived, there were a bunch of people outside of this pretty large house and they looked like they were having a party. When I pulled up into the driveway, a guy got in. I looked back at my client, and I didn't know whether to bust out laughing or be very concerned. There was a 40 plus year old man with lots of chest rug, a huge bald spot, and a diaper. You heard me right, a diaper. That's all he was wearing. I asked him, how's your night been going? 
trying to hold back the laughter, which he didn't seem to notice at all. My heart was racing because it was so difficult to hold back the uncontrollable urge to bust out. He referred to himself in the third person, and said in a shrill voice, Bud wanna go home! I had to bite my lip until it was so painful that I had to cry. I think I made myself bleed. So I started driving on to the destination. I'm guessing there was something very wrong with the guy mentally, so I felt bad for needing to laugh that bad, but come on, picture it. The guy didn't say much to me on the ride, but he did do a lot of baby things that made me want to laugh even more. I really wish I had my camera already so I could take this memory home with me. So once we got to his destination, he leaned in between the seats since he was sitting in the back and said, This is where Bud live. A little laughter slipped out in the form of a hawking sound. He told me that he wanted me to get out and come inside for a little treat. I'm guessing he meant tip, but I wasn't having that. I told him, it's okay, I'm pressed for time. He got a little angry and insisted. When I refused again, he crawled into the front seat and opened the passenger door to try to pull me out by the arm. For a man baby, he was really strong. He almost got me out of the car as my feelings of laughter, trying to slip out, turned into screams. He fell out like a klutz onto the pavement of the driveway and started turtling and screeching. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. But with the door still open, I hit the gas and left. A little way down the street, I stopped to back up and slam on the brakes to get the door shut on its own. But I could see him in my rearview mirror, running after my car. I slammed it in the drive and bolted off before he could get close to me. I stopped halfway home at a gas station to cool down and tell someone what had just happened to me so I didn't feel so crazy for having witnessed it just myself. Apparently someone knew him. He came into the store like once every few days, dressed like a baby, and he was a real brat about it. I went home and also told my dad, who just laughed at me, but ultimately ended up asking me if I was okay and bought me a camera so that wouldn't happen again. Or if it did happen again, I would at least have a little leverage. He understands that one bad review or complaint with Uber can get you deactivated. I called Uber and told them the story the next morning so I wouldn't get deactivated, but they just told me not to worry myself. I've talked to other Uber drivers in my area who have picked that guy up, and they've all made complaints about the guy just doing all kinds of craziness. I guess the guy is really living this fantasy. I've never had something that bad happen to me again, but I refuse to pick up anyone from that address again. During the early years of my life, I had a cousin that was absolutely horrible. My aunt would bring him over to my house every so often, and he was just the meanest little shit. He never got in any trouble for it though, but this kind of behavior would eventually turn into something worse. His mom didn't really care what he did, and didn't discipline him ever. He'd tear up things around the house, and I was the one that got blamed for it of course but those were just fleeting moments. My parents eventually came to the conclusion that maybe it wasn't me, since those things would never happen when he wasn't there. I was just the normal quiet kid, and never really got into any trouble. That's kind of still who I am. When I was about 12, my family started doing gatherings. My parents thought it would be great for everyone to get together, but all I could think of was my cousin and how he would ruin it. He was just a bit older than I was at the time, but again, he was a little gremlin. The very first gathering that we did was just a birthday party of someone who I didn't know, and we were left by the adults to pretty much fend for ourselves in the backyard. He beat up some kid that was there with us that nobody knew and got away with it. 
his mom had a nickname for him, and that was Sweet Angel, which made me sick every time I heard it. We never did see the one he beat up again, probably because his parents recognized the problem, as they should have. His mother, on the other hand, she was nice, until she wasn't. She was that kind of person who would make big deals out of nothing, and she would often get into some argument that nobody started but her, over nothing. Almost every family gathering that happened that he showed up at, there was usually a problem, and he never got into any trouble at all. During one Christmas that we all gathered at my other cousin's house, someone decided to start a fire in one of the back rooms. Can you guess who that was? There was actually two of them, but yes, one was my troublemaker cousin. I saw him fleeing the scene, and I went in there to try to put it out because what was on fire was the curtains. After I entered the room, one of the fire alarms went off, and everyone came rushing into that room and helped put it out. I was of course the one blamed for it. I tried to say it wasn't me, but I was taken home and grounded that day. I never forgave any of them for that, especially my cousin who got me in that trouble in the first place. I got my words out at some point, but they didn't believe that he was the cause of the fire, since they didn't see him anywhere around. I didn't see him for a very long time, and I did end up forgetting all about him at some point. When I turned 18, we were still gathering with family for get-togethers, but not nearly as often. Nobody really liked to travel, and some had spread all over the U.S. The one I wish went the furthest was my aunt with her son. They showed up at a Thanksgiving dinner one day. They were also planning to stay the whole week at my house afterwards. I dreaded that with my entire being. The whole time I was thinking about what he was going to set on fire this time, and what I was going to get blamed for. I also tried to think positive too, like, maybe he wouldn't be so bad this time around. Maybe he'd grown up and stopped being a menace. The day of the dinner came around and they got there. He didn't say a word to me that entire day. I was almost relieved about it until that night. At least the dinner went well, and my aunt didn't flip out about something random. My parents had gone to bed, and I was getting ready to. Unfortunately, I had the displeasure of walking in on my cousin in the bathroom, but it's not at all what you think. I would have rather quickly walked in on him on the usual occurrence, that you'd see something and back right out and yell sorry through the door. But he was standing on the edge of the bathtub, blowing smoke out the window, and holding this glass thing. He burst out of the bathroom when he saw me, and pinned me to the wall behind me, and yelled at me that I better not say anything. He pulled out a sharp object and put it against my throat, telling me that there would be consequences for ratting him out. Once he backed away and left me alone, I didn't feel safe in staying in the house anymore, so I left immediately and went to my friend's house in the next city over. She had to come pick me up because I didn't have a car yet, but I told her all about it. She thought I should go to the police and have him arrested for all that. But what exactly then? Where's my protection afterwards? I thought it was best if he left and I stayed at my friend's house for a week. She agreed to let me stay with her, although I do that occasionally anyways. My parents did call and ask where I went, but I only told them that. I did not tell them what happened. They probably wouldn't believe me anyway. I just kept this a secret between my friend and I. After that week, I went home to never speak about it. I did tell my parents that I wasn't going to any more family things, and if they were happening at home, I was just going to disappear until it was over. They were concerned about it, but I still kept silent. There was no guarantee that I wouldn't be hurt somehow if I stayed around. A few years later, I moved into my own place, and every holiday I would get invitations to go to something, but I always declined. I was happy and safe where I was, 
and I didn't want any part of that stuff. There were never mentions of my cousin being there, but I'd always assumed that he was. Years later, I caught wind of something. All the family gatherings that I missed didn't have him at them. He'd actually gone to jail for possession and aggravated assault some few years back. That made me both feel safer and even more sure that he might have done something to me at that same time. The Thanksgiving night that he showed how crazy he actually had become scared me beyond belief, and I sometimes found myself wishing things upon him that I normally wouldn't. Maybe jail was the best destination for him, seeing how he'd been acting all his life. I've gone through the thought process that I could have called the police on him and retaliated. I still come to the conclusion that he was crazy enough to do something to me, but maybe I would have been okay if I had. It all worked out in the end anyway, but I'm glad I had no part in it. I feel much safer these days because he's in and out of jail. I'm not part of his life at all, and most likely he gives very little thought if any to me. I also attend family events now too, but I'll call ahead and make sure that he won't be there. The psychological terror that can happen from one tiny little event can really mess you up for a long time. If you like this video, consider subscribing. If you are subscribed, hit the bell icon to make sure you never miss an upload. I just have one question for you. Who is that behind Who is that you? Behind